So what does all this mean for the Trump presidency and the U.S. election system? Harlan Ullman is a senior advisor at the Atlantic Council. That's a think tank focused on international affairs here in Washington, D.C. Harlan, welcome to our program. Good to be with you. Let me begin with the Mueller investigation. Three indictments. Are we going to see more names? You bet. And some of those names could be Michael Flynn. They could have Trump in them. Uh, once you get a special prosecutor, it's impossible to know when he will stop. When Ken Starr was investigating Whitewater, 18 months later, Bill Clinton had an affair with Monica Lewinsky, for which he was impeached. So this has got a long, long life in front of it. And if I were Mr. Trump in the White House, I would be very, very worried. Well, they say none of this points to any evidence of collusion. You never heard of Richard Nixon denying that he had any tapes or that he did anything wrong in Watergate. And what did uh, Mr. Clinton say? I did not have sex with that woman. Same thing. We'll see what happens. Mueller is a professional. Uh, there's a lot more that's going to come out. And I think that the Trump administration is going to be very badly tainted, whether or not Mr. Trump himself is guilty of collusion or obstruction of justice. Harlan, what do you make of the reaction, the tweets, the statements we've seen from the White House? Trump even went as far as calling Papadopoulos a liar, a low-level volunteer. Just last year, you probably know this already, he called him um, a member of his foreign policy team. In fact, there was a picture of him around a conference table with him, and Trump called him an excellent guy. If President Xi of China could give Donald Trump one piece of advice, it would be stay off Twitter. He tweets too much, and it gets him deeper and deeper into trouble. But you're not surprised by the denials or the White House trying to distance Oh, no, and they're going to become even more vicious, even more offensive. Look what they did with this poor soldier who was killed in Niger. They just completely continued their uh, attacks. I, I think that Mr. Trump does not know how to say, I'm sorry, or I was wrong. Let me go on to what we're seeing unfold on Capitol Hill mm -hmm. with these major tech companies uh, testifying. How can something like this even happen? Russia, Russia infiltrating companies like Google, like Facebook, like Twitter. Is that stunning to you at all? Absolutely not. Why? This has been going on since Gutenberg invest, invented the printing press 700 years ago. It's easy to do this. If you can speak English or Chinese, have a computer and the access to the internet, you have access to billions and millions of people. Let me ask you a question that I asked Roe. Is there a way to regulate this? And it's not just advertising we're talking about. It's fake information. I hate to use that word, fake news, propaganda, misinformation. Where do you draw the line between regulation long, and freedom of speech? That's the point. As long as you have freedom of speech, I can start a website. If that website is credible, I can put all the information I want. Once you determine that it's credible, then I start spreading falsehoods about you or whomever. That's what the Russians have done. They have been brilliant. And the 70,000 votes that determine the election in three states in the United States, there's a good chance or some chance that the Russians actually affected those people to vote the way they did. We are will we, see. Are we going to see any kind of changes after these two, yeah, three-day hearings? Yeah, we're going to see some kind of regulation, but I don't think it's going to be very effective because people are smart and they'll find workarounds, just like Facebook and social media will. The trouble, or I should say the reality with free speech, it cuts several ways. And as long as you have an Internet that's accessible to anyone and everyone, and people have computers, you're going to see this continue. And it's really up to us to be able to educate our citizens to know what's good and what's bad. We do that every day in things like uh, what's harmful to your health, what about sex, things like this. We have to have internet hygiene as well as part of curricula. We'll leave it there. Harlan Ullman, thank you so much, sir.